What's up, guys? We are so thrilled to be here with you. Hey, can I start off with a quick story real quick? So I grew up with two brothers, one older sister. She didn't live with us because she was much older than us, but my two brothers, one of them were twins, and the other one is four years younger than us. Well, when we moved down from New Jersey here to Florida, we moved right here in the Pine Hills community into a two bedroom duplex. And so think about it, three boys, mom and dad, and two bedrooms. What did we do? We had to share the bedroom. Yeah, that's right. One bed, one room, one closet, one bathroom for three boys. Yeah, a lot of testosterone in that room. But nonetheless, my point that I'm trying to make is that we shared everything, everything. And there was nothing wrong with it, of course. We were like, uh, I would say elementary age, you know, students at the time. My mom and dad was blessed after being here for about, you know, two, three years, mom and dad was blessed enough to purchase a brand new home. And this brand new home, it was like around the corner, pretty much on the outskirts of Pine Hills, right, Clark Kona Coe area, not too far from Pine, Pine Hills Road. You know, nice middle class neighborhood. And we go look at this brand new home and there's four bedrooms, two bathrooms. So now we're like, okay, we're gonna still share one bathroom, but we have four bedrooms here. That means mom and dad gets the master suite. Joel, you get a room. Solomon, you get a room. And I get my own room. Well, needless to say, my mom had other plans. She said, no, you three boys will be still sharing one room. The other two rooms will be guest bedrooms. And at the time I'm like, mom, that makes no sense whatsoever. Why would you have guest bedrooms when we don't have any guests coming over? Mom says, well, to be frankly honest with you, you three boys are filthy. You're nasty. You do not clean up after yourselves. It was a gut check, but it was true. My brothers and I still hadn't understood the concept of making up our beds when we woke up in the morning. We still didn't understand the concept of picking up our clothes off the floor. It was just normal stuff for boys, right? So as I continue to get older, my adolescent years, I'm now 13 years old. 13 years old, I don't know about you guys, but I was smelling myself a little bit. I was like, man, you know, okay, about to be in high school, it's gonna be good, but something's weird here. I, I need my own space. And so I go to my mom, I said, mom, 13, I think that's the right way of passage, you know, to manhood. 13 years old now, I need my own bedroom. I, I can no longer live in one bedroom with both of my brothers. Like we're literally sharing the same closet. Like, so there's like one section for sneakers for all three of us, one section for clothes for all three of us. You know, sharing the bathroom, I didn't mind. We didn't have to share a, be a bed because we had bunk beds and one single bed, but you know, I wanted my own space. Mom said, nah, sorry, you can't. So I said, what do I have to do to get my own space? And my mom looked at me as if, I think you know what you need to do. So at that point, I said, you know what? I'm going to do everything in my power to clean everything in sight. So I vacuumed every day. I swept the hallways. I cleaned the restrooms. I cleaned the tub really good, guys. I even washed dishes every day. Even on days when my brothers would have to wash dishes, I said, no, let me wash them because I'm gonna make sure that they're nice and shiny, right? So I would clean up after we all ate in our room, I made up our beds when we woke up, I made sure all of our dirty clothes were in the hamper and they were in the laundry room. I made sure that our closet was well organized. About six months of doing that, my mom knew that there was nothing that she could do from keeping me away from getting my own bedroom. So, of course, what do I do? I go to her with another proposition. I say, mom, I haven't really been keeping track, but for the past six months, I've been cleaning. Yeah, yeah, I've been like really taking care of my responsibilities around here. She says, what are you trying to say? So I think it's time for me to get my own bedroom. My mom looked at me. She said, you know what? You're right. You get your own bedroom. So what happened? I packed all my clothes and I moved down the hallway. Yep, that's right. Down the hallway, two doors down, my own bedroom. I was so ecstatic, so happy. That meant my own closet, my own bed, my own space. Oh my goodness time to get lit, right? 
So here it is. I'm in the 12th grade, fast forward to the 12th grade. I'm a senior in high school. And at this point, I am infatuated with fashion. All of my lunch money I would take and go buy clothes. I learned how to cut hair. I was literally cutting my peers' hair in the locker room at school during PE. Even during lunch, I was cutting hair. Yeah, $5 for a haircut, $3 for an edge. You heard it right. $5 for a haircut, $3 if you just wanted an edge. Oh man, I was banking. Every time I got paid, I'd hit Marshalls, I'd hit Ross, I'd hit Burlington. I would hit up all the sneaker stores because I wanted to be Simply Fly. So, of course, twin brother and I, we're in the 12th grade, little brother in the eighth grade. He decides one day, well, let me just give you some context. So usually in high school, after school, I pretty much just go hang out with my friends after school. You know, we pretty much do our homework. We hit the basketball court, shoot some hoops. And then around six o'clock or so, my parents will pick me up, bring me back home. On this particular day, I said, you know what? I'm not gonna go hang out with the boys. I'm gonna go straight home. Go straight home. For some odd reason, I'm putting my sneakers away in my closet and I noticed that my favorite Tommy Hilfiger polo was missing. Whoa, 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 I had not worn this, but like two times. So I don't know why it was missing. I went down to my brother's room. I said, man, maybe one of them have it in their room. Nope, went to the laundry hamper. Even though I knew that I hadn't worn it so because it wasn't dirty, I checked there, not, nowhere to be found. Then I figured out, wait a minute, my little brother, I know this little dirty rascal didn't put on or didn't go to school with my lovely polo Tommy Ilfiger shirt. So I said, you know, I got a better idea. I'm just gonna wait for him, right? So I'm looking out the window, see the school bus come pull up. He gets off the bus, he's walking, and the closer he gets, I can tell that he's wearing my polo Tommy Hilfiger shirt. I went crazy. The rage inside of me, I don't know. Let's just say, long story short, when he got in the house, <laughs> it wasn't too good for him. The fact of the matter remains that I wasn't mad that he had on my shirt. I was mad that he didn't ask me. He didn't ask for my consent. Today, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, today we're gonna to be talking about consent. You heard it right, consent. So what does consent mean? So that we're on the same page, just wanna give you a quick definition. Consent means to agree to do something or to allow something to take place. Once again, to agree to do something or to allow something to take place. Fab, can you kind of give them the context or just in our culture today, when we look at consent, what are we used to hearing? Like, how are we used to hearing consent? So as you guys know, um, in today's world, if you're looking at the news, the internet, um, you know, TV in general, you'll see multiple occasions in which consent was not really asked and still it was taken. And so consent matters because it is critical that we start um, encouraging more conversations about this. Um, if someone tells you no for something, then that means that they don't have your consent or you didn't honor their request for that consent and still did it anyway. So in Samson's case, <laughs> he may have not been mad because his brother was wearing the shirt, but the mere fact that he didn't ask. And so consent, guys, is very important. Right, and pretty much consent is a tool that we use to keep our relationships in a healthy place. That's the reason why consent is so important. And yes, in today's culture, consent is usually used in a negative connotation because of, you know, how we hear it. But then that leads us to think about this. Okay, so then if we're used to hearing about situations where one person didn't give consent and then something bad took place, then that means that if two people consent to something, maybe that's appropriate, right? Mm, maybe not. Let me give you an example. And I know it might be over the top or dramatic. Who doesn't love drama, right? All right, so myself, I'm married to a beautiful young woman by the name of Hermione. You all know her as Hermione. If I consented to be with another woman and another woman consented to be with me, just because we both consented doesn't make it 
does not make it appropriate. Matter of fact, I've just committed adultery. And ladies and gentlemen, I don't even want to think about what happens after that. So that leads us to the scripture today. Today, we're going to be looking at this famous guy. You might know him as Paul. Now, for those of you that don't know, Paul was passionate about Jesus followers treating each other in love. So much so, Paul writes this letter to a group of Christians in Rome, right? And when he's writing this letter, every letter that he's writing, it's basically to influence you know, other Jesus followers to love, to love one another, to, to lead in love. And at the time, Christianity was brand new. No one really knew about Christianity. There weren't any preconceived notions about Christianity. And the only way that people would be able to judge Christianity was to look at other Jesus followers, other individuals who are following Jesus to get a better idea of what Christianity meant. Isn't that ironic, Fab, that even today, while people still have preconceived notions about what Christianity is, isn't it vital? Don't you feel like it's vital where it's important that everything that we do, you know, it matters because there's someone that's trying to understand what Christianity is all about. Definitely. Um, sometimes, you know, even though we have the Bible, um, even though now, you know, there's a lot of churches live streaming, there still might be people who, who are not um, privy to that information. And so Samson or myself may be the only versions of Christianity that people can see. So it is important to still hold to those notions. And that's basically what Apostle Paul was doing right. in this letter. Right. And so we see here in Romans 12 to 10. Romans 12 to 10 specifically says, be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. I'm going to repeat it again. Romans 12, 10. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. What Paul is basically saying right there is that we need to value people for who they are, what they want, and what they don't want. Guys, Paul goes so far. He goes so, I mean, like he, he goes so much further than consent. He goes straight to honor. When he says honor, one another above yourselves. Honor simply means respect. So we are talking about the Jesus standard of behavior. So why is honor so important, Fab? Um, I think that honor is super important, important <laughs> because um, it's, a, it's the standard of Christianity. Um, if you don't have honor, then are you really, um, are you really showing your true Christianity? Right. And in regards to honor, it, guys, look at this simple way, right? The reason why we always emphasizing honoring your mother and father is pretty much the standard is because you learn respect right there. Anything that you honor, you respect it. And that we don't we don't live by the standard or we shouldn't live by the standard of just consent. We should always be living by the standard of honor. So let me give you some uh, examples on, you know, how you can per se honor something or someone, right? Choosing not to send an explicit photo. Yes, we're going there. We're going there, middle schoolers and high schoolers. Choosing not to send an explicit photo. You're showing honor. And what about you boys? I got something to say about you boys. Let me give you some game real quick. So you see a girl, she's cute. Fine as all outdoors. Wow, I felt old saying that. But this young lady is stellar. And you're thinking to yourself like, man, what would I do to be with her? You know what? I'm going to go ask her for her number. So you pretty much feeling yourself. You walk up to her and you say, hey, uh, hey, what's up, shawty? My name, you know, my name's Samson. But you know, they call me Smooth Sam. And she says, I'm not buying whatever you're selling. At that point, that's a no. Right. So here it is. You go back to your boys and you're like, man, she shot me down, man. Here goes your boys egging you on, man. You got it. Persistence is key, man. Persistence is key. Man. You, hey, just like Pastor David says, man, you got to shoot your shot, man. You never know when you'll get this opportunity. So there you go again, being persistent, right? You go up to her the next day. Or maybe you wait a week to, you know, let it die down. Or you probably pull one of my tactics, right? You probably pull something real nice out the closet. 
get a nice haircut, pull up on her again and say, hey, look, I know, I know what you said, you know, last week, but it's a brand new day. What's up? Can I have your phone number? She says no again. Fellas, accept the no. It's called honor. Please honor that young lady. You're respecting her by saying no. I could give examples. Uh, I could give examples on why that's important, but I won't send you guys on that rabbit trail. And then the last one is, guys, if you ever find yourself in a vulnerable place where you've gone a little too far, you're probably somewhere you shouldn't be. You're probably doing something you shouldn't do. If you know that, your conscience is telling you, wait a minute, I need to say no, I need to stop. By stopping or saying no right then and there, you're pretty much not only showing the other person honor, but you're showing yourself honor. It's almost like you need to value others when you're valuing others before yourselves, you're like, I'm going to do what's best for them no matter what it is that I want from them. So what are, like, just give that, like, can you give like, maybe like, I guess the ladies some key tips on like how to honor themselves or why honor is so important? Um, so I think that honor is important, especially um, as women. Unfortunately, uh, society has us to hold ourselves to a higher standard. Um, and so ways that we could honor ourselves um, and God, you know, because we are Christians is by a big one, uh, not sending explicit photos. Um, another way that we can express honor, I feel that uh, that can be by uh, what we wear. Um, you know, Sweet. just because you see everyone else wearing crop tops or booty shorts, um, you know, different things, that doesn't mean that you necessarily have to go do the same thing. Um, because as Christians, again, we have to honor ourselves, um, you know, by wearing, covering ourselves. And then, um, yeah, so I think those are two pretty good examples, especially that high schoolers feel pressured to do. Yeah. And I think. A simple way to remember it, if you guys don't remember anything from this lesson, a simple way to uh, remember this is, just think about it like this. You need to express and expect honor. I'm gonna say it again. Express and expect honor. And we're gonna give you some practical ways on how you could do that. First one, what does it look like to express honor? Ladies and gentlemen, ask yourself, am I doing what's best for them, despite what I want from them. Yeah, despite what I want from them, am I doing what's best for them, despite what I want from them? So just earlier, I alluded to the fact that, you know, if I talk to a young lady and she looked pretty, and back in high school, uh, let's just say that, uh, I always tell you guys this story, but I'll tell you guys again. Like, I was, my face was full of acne, but, it's something about a guy who exudes confidence, right? So I was never afraid to approach a young lady. And at the end of the day, I thank God so much today that not only did I honor the no, but that they said no, because to be honest with you, this is a quick shade moment. Don't do what I do. It's a quick shade moment. But sometimes, so let me see. I graduated from high school in 2001. Next year will be 20 years that I've been out of high school. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty old there, pal. <laughs> yeah, pretty old. Yes, right? So here I am, it's 19 years removed from high school, and sometimes I check, sometimes, not even check, sometimes I'm on Facebook or Instagram, and I'm looking at some of those women that I used to, I wish would show me some attention. But because of honor, Praise God, because of honor. Because man, some of them, mm, I don't think that we would have lasted. So I thank God so much for honor. I thank God so much that I respected the no <laughs> from these young women, because I don't know where I'd be today. And then <laughs> secondly, we talked about this earlier. We need to understand that, guys, we live by a higher standard than consent. We do, we live by a higher standard than consent, and that's what? It's honor. honor. Honor, right? Guys, everything we do, we should be not only honoring ourselves, but we should be honoring the person in front of us. It's exactly what Paul talked about when he says that we need to be devoted to one another. We need to honor one another above yourselves. 
And then the third one, these are ways to express honor, guys. The third one is to accept the no. Yeah, I know I keep drilling this down in your head, but guys, if you hear the no, most likely you've heard the no in your head and you're also hearing the person in front of you say no. We need to, we need to, we need to understand that it's okay. It's okay to respect that no. Now in regards to what does it look like to expect honor? We need to practice saying no. And I can give a perfect analogy on this. I'm gonna let Fab uh, take this over. I didn't discuss this with her, but Fab and I, well, I'm plant-based. I think Fab's vegan. Am I? Yeah, plant-based. She's plant-based. Yeah. Okay, so we're both plant-based, right? And when I say we need to practice the no, it's like with food, right? Like what happened when you first transitioned from like animal products to plant-based? Um, honestly, I was just like really just disgusted <laughs> with me. Wow. Like, cause I used to work in a restaurant. So, you know, like go into the back to put dishes or to the manager's office, like you would just see, you know, just the meat just laying there. And then I just got to a certain point where I just cold turkey, just cut it off. And um, a lot of people ask me, is it hard? Do I see things and want to eat it? But because I'm honoring my body <laughs> well, and honoring the decision that I made, that's good. It, I don't really go back to it. So that reminds me of my wife. We just did a Wellness Wednesday, a, you know, quick little snippet video on like our journey to just clean eating. And one of the things I opened up the video with was like, you know, hey babe, how long have you been plant-based? And the reason why I'm asking her is because she went, my wife went plant-based a year before me because she woke up one day like you and just simply just cold turkey. Whereas for me, it was a culture shock. I was like, wait, I still need my meat, my eggs, my cheese. You know what I mean? I, like, like, how can I cold turkey? No, I need to wean it down. But when I say practice saying no, I guess that might've been a bad example because you're not really practicing no. You just woke up one day and say, no, never again, right? Whereas myself, like, it's almost like I have cheat days, right? And on my cheat days, I dibble and dabble with Krispy Kreme donuts, right? And when we say practice saying no, it's almost like, you know, two donuts, that's an easy kill. Like, we body two donuts. Looking at that last donut, knowing dang well the type of lifestyle you have, your plant base, it's look, like looking at that third donut, you're like, man, you know what? Yeah, this is, this is a good moment for me to practice saying no. So those are like practical ways of like, just anything, like small things, like you're in a group chat, right? With your, with, with your friends and someone says, sends an inappropriate video. Like you know, as soon as it comes to your text, as soon as it comes to your feed, your thread, you know that it's inappropriate just by the cover. Are you gonna click on it? Are you gonna delete it? Right, and that's, saying no we have to practice saying no to the little things to the small things because then when the stakes are much higher the big things uh it's a piece of cake like you're comfortable like you know fab said like cold turkey it's like if you're ever in a situation where you're thinking about or like you know thinking about doing something inappropriate because you've already learned to say no to those small things the big things you already know uh you've already overcome those things Second one, decide how you want to be treated. This is, I used to think that this was only for girls, but boys, men, young men, like we are not the leaders of tomorrow, but like we are, I'm speaking as if I'm young, I'm sorry. Adolescents, you're not the leaders of tomorrow, you're leaders of today. And what that simply means is you set the standard. Don't wait on the female. It's like we shouldn't have this premise or we shouldn't have this idea that only females should be the ones respecting themselves. As a man, as a man, we need to learn how to set the standard. My dad did something with me one day. I must admit, when I was young, I was a bit rebellious, thought I was a thug. Matter of fact, I thought I was a hot boy, yeah. I wore white shirts, white t-shirts. There was a period of time where I wore white t-shirts to school every day, just so that when you saw me, you can kind of associate me, you know, as a hot boy. And some of you may be too young to understand what I'm saying. But uh, yeah, my dad one day said, he asked me, Samson, why are you sagging your pants? And I mean, I really didn't have an answer. I thought it was, you know, thought it was pretty cool. It added to my 
uh, fashion. I don't know, I, I was a kid, right? And I thought that it was okay. And he said, let me give you an example. What if someone was walking around in Winn-Dixie? Yeah, I said Winn-Dixie, guys, because that's what store was around when I was young. What if we're walking around the grocery store and someone happens to be, someone happens, you know, happens to be looking for a youth or a young individual that they want to sow a seed into their life. They probably want to give them a full ride scholarship to go to college. Samson, even though you make A's and B's, even though you're always on the honor roll, right? The fact that this man or this person sees you with your pants sagging, do you really think they're going to consider even approaching you? And from that day forward, he taught me a lesson. We need to be setting the standard. So men, young men, we need to be setting the standard. If you're sagging your pants like I was when I, when I was an adolescent and you feel as though, you know, it's part of your swag or you're just walking around, you know, you know, flabbergasting off at the mouth, just saying whatever you want to say, set the standard. Like we should always be looking to not only respect the people in front of us, but we need to start by respecting ourselves. And we think about setting the standard. Is there something that you want to probably, you know, say to the kids in regards to setting the standard? Um, when I think about setting the standard, um, just to kind of piggyback off of what Samson said, like we uh, basically, when people see you and you guys will grow to realize this as you get older, when people see you, uh, that's basically their first impression of you. So if Samson, you know, continued to maybe sag his pants, maybe he would have found somebody that could have given him some scholarship money. But because of that, they probably thought that, you know, he was a thug and that he was doing hot boy stuff. and deemed him in, uh, you know, unqualified to receive it. So I think that setting the standard is, you know, of course, honoring yourself because you're showing people that, you know, you're capable of, you know, being a good Christian and that you're also uh, showing people that um, you are leading by example as a Christian as well. Right, and the last one, this last point is so, is so heavy to us in regards to just what does it look like to expect honor is to speak up. We have to speak up, ladies and gentlemen, speak up. So it's possible that some of you, you know, you asked, you asked to be honored. You spoke up, you spoke up, you asked to be honored, but your voice was not respected. And now you're walking around with guilt for something that happened or shame or condemnation or just anger full of bitterness. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what happened, but that may be the case for some of you. And frankly, we're sorry that that happened to you and that you're going through that. But you still should expect honor. Whatever you do, you should still expect honor. We have to speak up. It is important. I mean, who can they confide in, Fab, if someone is, ex is experiencing something like that? Um, for some people, they may be scared to confide in adults because maybe it was an adult that they trusted that, you know, um, didn't regard their consent, didn't honor them. So if you feel like there may be a peer at school that you can talk to or maybe um, someone at church that you can speak to. Um, those are some good ways to, you know, just let people know that something happened and that you need help. You know, it's okay to, to, to need help. Um, you know, don't feel shameful, don't feel guilty, and don't definitely don't feel like it's your fault that it happened to you. Um, it is definitely unfortunate, but there are adults to help and there are people that can help you, you know, just get through anything that you're going through. Definitely, and in the midst of speaking up, we need to understand that all in all, that we can rest whatever issues that we're dealing with at the feet of Jesus, at the feet of the cross. As if you don't get anything from this lesson today, we want you to remember that it is vital, it is important, it is key that you expect and express honor. See you guys soon.